Hey y'all, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Moki Bath, and thank you so much for being here. If you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button and click the little bell so you get notifications every time I post a new video. I am a full-time reseller, so I make a lot of content about reselling, about thrifting, about sourcing, about different brands to be on the lookout for. And then I also am starting to share a lot more of my numbers and trying to be more transparent about you know, what you can expect going full time as a reseller. So I'm going to bring you along on my sourcing journey a little bit, and then we're gonna do a haul. I'm gonna show you what I found. So uh, if that sounds interesting to you, stay tuned. Let's jump back in time to yesterday when I started out this little sourcing journey. Okay. Hey y'all, okay, so I am in the office. I just, um, I've had a weird day, long day. Uh, edited a YouTube video, wrote a job description, got that posted, photographed and list some stuff, but now it's, I think, three o'clock and I'm desperately in need of inventory. So we are going to go sourcing together. Um, I think I need to, I think I'm gonna go to a buy sell trade store and a bunch of thrift stores and so i will probably be thrifting and y'all i'll bring y'all with me till they close i think goodwill's close at nine so we've got six hours and hopefully we can find a lot of stuff some of the stuff that they've been putting out at goodwill recently has been fire but sometimes it sucks so it's just you know hopefully we get lucky today we get a lot of stuff so that we can list a lot on thursday and friday i think this video is going up friday so i'll definitely do a haul with y'all tomorrow but all right let's get going time is of the essence first we're going to crossroads i am on hawthorne boulevard i love this city it's so cool hopefully we find some Good stuff. Oh, by the way, Harlow. It's my favorite. Favorite place to get lunch. Maybe I'll get food after because I'm kind of hungry. All right. Okay, so the first place I went to in Crossroads every single time is the denim section. I found these Joe's jeans that were high rise and great condition and had that cute distressing. So I picked them up. But then after looking them up, I decided not to get them but joe's jeans is a brand that i'm kind of challenging myself to research more because i know certain styles do well um i just don't really know what they are so after going to the denim section i think i went to dresses and jackets and then ended up in tops um and y'all saison if you don't know this brand definitely go watch my 10 bolo brand video back from september it's still one of my favorite videos i've ever done that I love, um, but I love, love, love that brand. Um, and that was probably my favorite find from the day, honestly. Um, so this is a brand, Lovers and Friends. That's an in-house Revolve brand. I was able to find that piece. This is a good example of a Madewell piece I sold a long time ago, but wouldn't anymore. Okay, this Re Reformation piece, $22.50. So I'm willing to pay up for Reformation because it does have a really uh, quick sell-through rate and it's an in-high-demand brand. So whenever I find it, I look up comps. So this is me looking. It's a short sleeve cardigan. I know that um, because it's $22.50, if I want to make a 50% profit margin, I basically have to sell it on Poshmark for around $55, so or a little more than that. So um, I'm looking up comps here. It looks like listing price is maybe gives me enough room, but then when I look at sold, you know, it's selling for $40, $25, so I decided not to get it. Woohoo! All right, we spent two or we, I spent two hours. <laughs> I guess y'all were along with me in Crossroads and I found 20 things. I'm so excited about it. Really hit the jackpot there, but I got my smoothie and um, I am now headed off to Goodwill. I think it's 5.30, so three and a half hours. Here we go. At Goodwill, I got this. So I'm going to attach to my cart and hopefully that will help me film this. So got my reusable bag, got my little thingy bob. Let's go find some thrift finds. Wouldn't it be cool if both places we went, we got 20 items. That would be sick. All right. Fingers crossed. Once again. Y'all, that little tripod thing that I showed you. I ended up breaking it while I was in this Goodwill, so it was a good while it lasted, but uh, it's now dead. Um, so here I am going to the first section of the thrift store, and like I've said so many times, the shoe section is 
the first place I go to shoes is one of my favorite categories. It just has a really good sell-through rate and it they are really quick to list um, because you don't have to do any kind of steaming, measuring, etc. So um, I really like to take my time. I go row by row, look and feel different shoes because um, feeling the shoe is the for me, the fastest way to determine whether it's a high quality shoe or not. And if it's a high quality shoe with a brand that I don't recognize, then I love looking it up. You know, Google is my friend and looking up uh, different brands on Poshmark is something that I'm constantly doing while sourcing, you know, to this day. Uh, it's just, that's how you really do find bolo brands that you've never heard of before that are available to you in your thrift store so the next section i go to almost always is denim jeans um, here is one of my finds from today that i'll show you later in the haul so that's basically kind of how i go i go shoes denim dresses jackets those are my top four categories right now springtime and um, that's the order i go in when I find myself going through blouses like I am here, <laughs> that's when I know I'm getting kind of desperate because I didn't find a lot in the thrift store, as I'll talk about later, and I'm just kind of wasting my time going through tops and I didn't end up finding anything here. So something that I want to be more disciplined about in the future is just knowing when to cut myself off, knowing when um, you know a thrift store isn't really panning out and being able to move on. Here I am going through athletic wear, which I do want to sell more of in the future, but I just rarely find good athletic wear and Goodwills for some reason. So um, it's just another category that I end up going into when I'm getting desperate and really just trying to find something, you know, make my time uh, worth it a little bit, but I didn't end up finding anything in this section either. So... <sighs> okay, well, found two things in that Goodwill. And the two things I found, I found within like the first 15 minutes of being there. So don't you love when that happens? Um, it's wasted like at least an hour. But that's how it goes sometimes. So in the last couple times I went to this particular Goodwill, I found such amazing stuff. So it was bound to happen that, you know, it was a dud this time around. But... <sighs> I think, you know, I have, I have time probably for another one, but I'm so tired that I think I might just pick this up back tomorrow morning. All right, well, stay tuned. I'll talk to y'all later. Good night. Hey, y'all. Good morning. It's the next day, and I am at a Goodwill, so I am going to jump into this one and hopefully find some stuff, and then we'll do the haul, and I'll steam this stuff and get it listed and, you know, hopefully have enough for today and tomorrow. So, um... Join me within this Goodwill. This Goodwill is massive, so I'm going to really have to um, focus on only a few sections because I don't have tons of time, but let's go and find some stuff. Heading into another Goodwill, and I'm grabbing my cart, and putting my reusable bag in there, and heading to the shoes. These pair of Birkenstocks were marked up to $69.99, and when I lived in Kansas, there was nothing ever marked up to even anything that close but that's the trade-off you get when you move to a big city you find great stuff a lot of times but you know sometimes it's just marked up too high to resell um and then i headed to the maxi dresses section which is my this is a section i hate and love because it's so hard to go through but oftentimes you can find some amazing pieces here but i didn't this time and then after the dresses section i headed to the denim section once again um, it's kind of, those are my, that's my trifecta, shoes, denim, dresses, and then jackets is kind of the fourth one there, but heading, uh, going through these jeans, I wanted to mention can-can jeans, I've heard other resellers say that those can be a good quick flip, um, it's not a brand that I'm particularly drawn to, but just because I don't sell it doesn't mean it doesn't sell, I just wanted to put that out there, because a lot of times, you know, I hear people in the comment section say, yeah, that works for me. I disagree with you. And if it works for you, more power to you. You know, I think that's the dream. That's the goal is that we're all finding the business model that works for us, that is tailored to our strengths and our location and everything like that. 
Okay, here I am once again, going through the blouses. You know I'm getting desperate at this point. You know, my rule of thumb, I think, going forward with these sections is um, if I find a lot of good stuff in my favorite sections, that usually means that there have been a few uh, people donating that have, you know, really good taste and aligned with the stuff that I pick up. And in that case, you know, I think it's worth going through other sections because they probably donated other things. But in this case, I should have just cut my losses and moved on. So I'm back in the car and um, second Goodwill where I only found two things and I spent way too long in there and just, you know, that defeated feeling when you spend so much time <laughs> going through racks and you find nothing. But luckily I found that stuff at Crossroads yesterday. So thankful for that because if with, without that I would really be lost today. I, would, I wouldn't have anything to list and that is the nature of this industry which makes it so difficult. Uh, to scale because you know it's just unpredictable whether you're going to be able to find enough inventory to list on any given day so i'm really tired because i haven't had coffee yet and i haven't had anything to eat yet so um i'm gonna go to starbucks and then go steam this stuff i'm excited to go through that stuff i got at crossroads yesterday and show y'all i also you know i did the two things i found today one is great i was just looking at comps and I'm really excited because I've actually never sold, it's a Byron Lars dress that was sold at Anthropology, and I've never found anything by Byron Lars. Super, super excited about that. So time to go to Starbucks, I'm in the office, and get to work and show y'all what I found. All right, I'll meet y'all there. Okay, so I went thrifting yesterday, and I went to a buy, sell, trade store yesterday, and then I went thrifting this morning, and I have processed and steamed everything that I got, and actually during the process of looking everything up and going over comps and putting it in my spreadsheet, I discovered that there are about five things I wanted to take back. So the beauty of, you know, sourcing at the buy, sell, trade store or Goodwill's here is that I can return things. So Goodwill, I have a two week window, Crossroads, I have a one week window. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that with about five things that I got at Crossroads. But the other uh, 15 things that I got, I am keeping, I'm really excited about and wanna show you. So let's jump into the haul. Found some really good stuff. The first of which being this Reformation dress. So this was the Reformation piece that I found. It is this strawberry pink color. It's called the Angelina dress. It's a really pretty maxi dress, which is perfect for the season we're going into. And then it's got this deep low back with this also kind of V-shaped back, which I thought was really pretty. And here is the tag, and it's a size small. So, yay. Okay, and then the second piece that I got was this Madewell. Somebody at Crossroads basically donated all of their silk pieces from Madewell. And it must have been a few weeks ago that they donated them because they were all marked half off for some reason. So this was one of them, which I thought was really pretty. It's a printed peasant dress with this lace up neckline, three quarter sleeves, just a really great piece for like almost any season. And I love the fact that it's silk. It's a natural breathable fabric. So yes, excited about that one. I was really excited about this one, y'all. I have sold this before, and when I sold it last time, I found it new with tag, and it sold so quickly. At that time, that was last year, it was a size small. So this, uh, so I already have the listing, so I, it's really easy for me to list this piece. This is a large free people dress, and it's this really cute wrap dress. Now I'm blanking on the name, but it's got this really gorgeous floral print this ruffle neckline. I love this dress. Okay, so again, someone donated all there, but it's different sizes, so it's confusing, but all these Madewell silk pieces I found. And this is a Madewell size zero, and it's a really pretty floral silk dress. I love this floral print. It's very retro inspired, but this has this really cool halter neckline, and then it's off the shoulder, and it has a sleeve. So it's from a recent season, and then it has a ruffle, you know, detail along the, I guess, shoulder line, because this is technically the neckline. But yeah, 100% silk as well. Gorgeous. And again, another silk piece from Madewell. This is an extra small. 
And this is an off the shoulder kind of crop top that's 100% silk and this really pretty uh, retro inspired print. Very 70s, I love it. It's got this these tassels on um, the shoulder ties there and you can adjust it with the tie and then it has that little flouncy sleeve off the shoulder. All right, y'all, again, and this is a different size, so this is a size six, but this is a silk dress by Madewell as well. This is a really, when I was taking comps on this dress, I was very excited because it's a really popular style, and I can totally understand why, because it's really cute. It's got this really awesome star print, and it's got, you know, this really beautiful plum color, a faux wrap top, and then a skirt with a ruffle hem and then these kind of ruffles on the sleeves as well just really really cute size six 100 percent silk again really really pretty and so if y'all watched my last video i talked about how lululemon to my surprise did really well for me in february so i am trying to get myself to go through the active wear section more often since i don't work out <laughs> yet yet i just ordered a mirror so if you guys have any opinions on the mirror like workout thing, let me know in the comments down below, but I don't work out right now, so I just, active wear is not really top of mind for me personally, but it sells really well, and I need to make more of a conscious effort to uh, go through those sections in the thrift store. So when I was in Crossroads, I did go through the active wear section, I found this Lululemon bra that was half off, and it's just this really pretty kind of almost watercolor, maybe floral print. I've actually sold this style of bra before, so it was easy for me to look it up and find the stock photo. But this is a size six, and I really like the combination of the purple and the gray. I think that's really pretty color combo, so I went ahead and picked that up. Okay, y'all, this is my favorite piece that I found during this entire sourcing trip or journey. I am obsessed with this brand. It is my, what, fourth time finding this brand. I have found it in thrift store once, and then I found it at Buy, Sell, Trade Store twice. And my third time finding it at the Buy, Sell, Trade Store. And this is this, uh, I, I forget the name of this exact blouse, but it will be listed in my closet in case you're curious. Um, it's this 100% silk, gorgeous polka dot blouse with this ruffle going across the front diagonally. Really, really pretty. Cezanne, if you don't know, is a French direct-to-consumer brand, so they have a website that is so, their stuff is so cute. If you don't know about Cezanne, and here, this is how you spell it, S. E with an accent aigu, <laughs> Z-A-N-E, so S-E-Z-A-N-E dot com. Just go there, go check it out. Just those gorgeous pieces. And if I had $1,000 to spend at any one brand, it would probably be this brand because I love their stuff and I don't own any of it personally, but you know, that probably needs a change. And I'm very tempted to keep this because it is a size 36, which in French is a size four. I'm not going to because these sell for so much money, y'all. You know, it's 100% silk and Cezanne is just a really high in demand brand. So I, I can't allow myself to keep it. Okay, the next is a really cute, I just actually purchased a free people jumpsuit type thing that I wore in Mexico and, and I put a picture of me in it here. I'll just put it up on Instagram. And so I love it. It's like the most comfortable thing that I've ever purchased. I purchased it at Nordstrom Rack during their Clear the Rack sale for myself. And so when I came across this at the Buy Sell Trade Store, I was like, okay, I love the one I own. I think someone's gonna love this one. It's free people beach and whoever, it, I bought this at Crossroads, but whoever traded in must have got it at Goodwill because it has that mark on the tag, which I can get out using wet wipes. This is a size large. And this is a really cool romper. And it's just got these patch pockets on the front, this button detailing on both sides, and then the button detailing on the top. And I just think this is like the perfect swimsuit cover up because it's so comfy, so casual. If you're going to the beach, you're going to a resort, like this is the type of stuff that you kind of want to just lounge in and like pop on before you go to breakfast or whatever. I just really loved that piece that I bought for myself, so I hope whoever ends up with this piece loves it. I hope it sells. Love it. Love, love, love that type of piece. Okay, this is something I'm actually kind of experimenting with, um, and I don't sell a lot of Urban Outfitters. It's an Urban Outfitter, so I'll show you the tag. Um, you know, their in-house label, and then this is new a tag. 
And so this is the, actually the first thing I found at Crossroads. Yeah, like I said, I don't sell a lot of Urban Outfitters, but I thought this this top was so cute. It's so, you know, 90s, early 2000s-esque. It's really got this really pretty kind of cowl neck draped front and then a really dramatic open back with this crisscross strap detail. Um, and then it's this, you know, metallic silver. So I thought that was really fun, really 90s, really in right now. So I thought I'd give it a try. And then I found this Lovers and Friends, which is an in-house brand from Revolve. So I am fairly familiar with Revolve brands. I've sold a bunch of them. And so I'm hoping to sell more of them in the future. So this was a really cute Revolve dress that's perfect for, you know, the summer, spring break, etc. It's this floral print. It's got these pom-pom detailings on the sleeve and on the hem. And it's off the shoulder dress, I just really cute. And then it's got this halter with the tie that also ties the neckline. So I thought this was really, really cute. Got that at Crossroads. And then y'all, I know in my um, anthropology video that I did, I talked about how I don't like this brand anymore. But like I said in the video, there are certain pieces typically that aren't jeans that I do really like to sell. And this is one that when I saw the style, I was like, this is really, really cute and unique. So I want to try it out. It's these wide leg corduroy kind of culottes, but they're, I guess, cropped pants that are in this really pretty baby blue color. And I like um, corduroy only if it's kind of this wide tooth corduroy. To me, that's really fun and retro and very 70s. The really kind of skinny corduroy, I tend to stay away from, just personally and also reselling wise. But this really wide tooth corduroy, I think is so cute. And I have actually a suit set from the 70s, this wide tooth corduroy suit that I wore to my first Posh Fest ever, and I have a Posh Fest horror story with that suit that maybe one day I'll come on here and tell a story time, a Posh Fest story time, but <laughs> anyway, I, I'm obsessed with white tape corduroy. Uh, so I thought I wanted to give those a try, and those are a size 30, so that's also a good size that I was excited about. Okay, so if these don't sell, I may keep them because I am a big fan of plaid trousers or honestly just trousers and kind of menswear inspired pieces for women. These are free people and they are size small. And I mean, this is kind of a window pane print, plaid print. Um, it's got the pleating on the front, the rolled cuffs on the ankles, just really, really cute. So these were half off, so I thought I'd give them a go, even though, you know, they're not necessarily a springtime piece. I think they're so cute that they're worth picking up. And that's really kind of the rule of thumb that I use when choosing out of season pieces. Right now, I'm not like running to the sweater section, but if I find a sweater that I think is really cute and something that I want to sell, then I'll definitely pick it up and list it. Um, the only thing that seasons really change is kind of my whole strategy to what sections I go to in the thrift store first. But of course, if I come across a piece like a coat during summer or a pair of shorts during the fall, I still pick it up if I really think that it aligns with the styles and trends and brands that my potential customer is looking for. So just something to keep in mind that if you find something that's out of season, but it's still something that you think will be in high demand come the next season, I would recommend picking it up and getting going ahead and getting it listed because you never know. And it's better just to, you know, keep, keep things moving, keep things listing and just, you know, keep things fresh in your closet. So this is a pair of Madewell jeans that I was, I thought were really cute. It has this uh, really cute distressing on the ankle, which I thought was unique and cute and interesting. And then this exposed button fly, which I always think is a really cute detail on some Madewell jeans. And then the patch is in really good condition. And these are a 32 petite, so you know, I want to incorporate as many different sizes in my closet as possible, so I thought that would be a fun piece to pick up for that size and for that brand. You know, I came across a lot of Madewell in the buy, sell, trade store, and I had to just be particular with what pieces I was willing to pay up a little bit for. Those were unique and cute enough for me to go ahead and take the plunge, but I wouldn't say that for all the pieces. I would typically pick up Madewell if it is marked half off. 
at Crossroads unless it's an older style. I just really like selling Madewell denim. Okay, this is a brand I've never sold, but I, you know, have been following for quite a little while. It was like so trendy, what, one or two years ago. Everyone was obsessed with this brand and I never found it then, but you know, I found a couple pieces recently and these were marked half off. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and try them out. I am Gia. These are a pair of plaid pants with the elastic at the ankle. And these are just really, really cute. They're still available on shopup.com, so they are a fairly recent style. And yeah, I, they're size large. I thought I'd just go ahead and try that brand out and see how it does. See if it's still in demand. And so then I went to, you know, the thrift store Goodwill after Crossroads and had limited success at both Goodwills I went to. But that night I went to one and I found these jeans. I find Adriana Goldschmidt fairly often, but these styles that I really gravitate towards in this brand are this high rise or super high rise. And these are the Mila ankle super high rise, even though the text is kind of faded here, but I thought these were really, really cute and in excellent condition. They have it distressing on the top here and they're just a medium wash, high rise skinny jean, which, you know, I really don't think will ever go out of style. So this is the age, agey, aged denim tag. Really cute. And I actually sold a pair of AG jeans on eBay last month that did re sold really fast. So I'm going to play around more with this brand. And AG is Adriana Goldschmidt and it's often sold at Anthropology, you know, everywhere. Nordstrom, Shop Bop. If you think about it, if you can think it, it's probably been sold there. So I wanted to pick that up. And then at that same Goodwill, I found these Jack Rogers wedges. Jack Rogers is a brand that used to do really, really well, but I don't know how it performs anymore. It's been a while since I found a pair that was in good enough condition that I felt comfortable picking it up. And these have, you know, this stacked wooden wedge, this leather upper with these cool golden accents. And they're a size seven and a half, so perfect for summer, spring. Let's give it a go. Okay, and then this morning I went to another Goodwill and had very limited success there, but I thought I'd go ahead and show you the pieces, the two pieces <laughs> that I found. And again, you know, sometimes that's just how it goes. Um, it's really unfortunate and you just gotta keep going. You gotta keep getting out there and visiting the thrift store, keep listing everything you can. You know, sometimes that's why having a death pile isn't necessarily a bad thing, but definitely don't drown in your death pile. On days when the thrift store is dry, you'll have that to fall back on. Onto, so I, I am kind of jealous of people <laughs> who do have uh, death piles for that reason. So this is a Lulu's chunky heel sandal, which I thought was so cute. It's a suede upper and it's just like so, you know, retro inspired, really cute. Here's the Lulu's. Uh, logo again. I've been picking up a good amount of Lulus and with mixed results So we'll see how these do but these are a size 7 and I just thought they were so cute There's something I would wear if I wore heels, <laughs> which I don't I have bad feet But I thought those were really cute and then I got one more piece. I gotta go grab it Okay, I'm keeping the tag on this one because I'm really on the fence on whether or not I'm gonna keep it But I wanted to show y'all um, This is a uh, Byron Lars dress and Byron. I would honestly not have uh, recognized this tag if it weren't for the anthropology video that I did. So doing those videos is actually incredibly helpful to me too because it allows me to do research and also share what I find with y'all and it really helps me familiarize myself with different tags and brands and so forth. But I didn't know that one of Byron Lars's tags looked like this, the Beguile line by Byron Lars. And this is a piece that was sold at Anthropology, and comps look so good on this piece. I think it's called the Mona dress. It's a knit dress with all this really pretty crochet detail and these really beautiful buttons. But the reason, and I comp, like I said, comps are like $100 plus, but the reason I'm considering taking it back is because it, this piece is just not in very good condition. It's got a lot of pilling throughout and two of the buttons have come undone. They've kept it the, somehow like they sewed the buttons on there, but they didn't sew the buttons to the back. So I don't know if that is intentional. I need to do, I need to look up some like comps and see if that's how it's supposed to be or if someone was trying to repair it by doing that. But it is a gorgeous piece and I got it for a good price compared to comps. So 
it might be worth trying to restore and sell. That is definitely a brand by Anthropology. That is definitely one to know and to keep on the lookout for. Which, by the way, if you hear Bolo brands and you're like, what are they talking about? Bolo just stands for be on the lookout. So Byron Lars would fit that category. But anyways, that is what I found. I have um, drafted most of these listings, so now I need to just go ahead and photograph them and get them up and listed. Thank you all so much for joining me on this little sourcing journey. Hopefully next time we'll have more luck, but you know, that's just how it goes sometimes. And that's why it's good to diversify the different places that you go. You know, it is good to have honey holes, but keep on trying out different thrift stores, whether it's a local thrift store in your area, try out buy sell trade stores, try out Marshalls, try out TJ Maxx, you know, try out all the different options in your area. And then also what I used to do when I lived in Wichita was take little road trips to different, you know, cities and towns around. I'm someone who loves a road trip, so I would take any excuse for a good old road trip. I just pop in my like podcast or my audiobook and I just get on the road and can clear my mind and you know dream and stuff like that. Yeah, I know a lot of y'all have told me, you know, you can't find these types of things in your area, so I feel your pain. I was there only six months ago, so we just have to be scrappy, we have to be resourceful, we've got to keep evolving, pivoting, and trying new things. So anyway, thank y'all so much for watching this video. Please subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see y'all in the next one. Okay, love y'all. Bye!